I don't know if you guys were aware, but the people that were buying those Nissan Leafs and Chevrolet Volts way back in the day, like over 13 years ago, they were all rich. Why do I say that? Because generally early adopters are rich people. So as we move into like the mainstream of selling electric cars, whether you agree or not, car companies are scratching their head thinking to themselves, maybe we should make something for rich people. So depending on how you look at it, that may look like the dreams or fuzzy logic of the sales and marketing group of a specific car company. In this case, it would be Mercedes. The logic here was, let's make an electric Maybach, first ever electric Maybach. Now, huge point to remember from our tech review, yes, this may be based on the EQS SUV, specifically the 580, however, the motors are different. The motors they've taken from the EQS AMG. Now, what does that mean in terms of the battery? There, it's still 107.8 kilowatt hours. In terms of charging, this isn't the fastest mousetrap out there. Like DC, for example, that's up to 200 kilowatts. AC, 9.6 kilowatts. Why is that important to you and I? Let's say you and I were to take this to a DC fast charger, the fastest one we can find. This would take about 31 minutes to go from 10 to 80%. Then there's the fact that this is quite a powerful EV. So what does that mean in terms of performance figures? One we really don't think about in terms of a Maybach is zero to 60. That would be 4.1 seconds to 60. In terms of VMAX, uh, it's the same as the EQS 580. It's limited to 130 miles an hour. Now with that, if you get value out of these episodes, could you do us a favor? Click on the like button, subscribe, and most importantly, share these episodes. Vielen Dank. Not that it matters to the kind of folks that are driven in vehicles like this. 6,228 pounds, or depending on express your weights and measures, 2,825 kilograms. With that, this is a car about three different personalities. Wow, that is quite a bit quicker off the line than the EQS SUV. And this is where we get into the second personality. What we just did there is comfort. Let's go into sport. Uh, this is a stunning road on Vancouver Island with no one around us. And we're gonna launch again, and reminder, 6,300 pounds. Bigger difference. Oh, hey now. It feels like the front motor is talking to the back motor and the back motor is talking to the front motor. In the comfort mode, it's not as immediate. It's not as aggressive. That's the big difference you notice here. Now as we come to train tracks, kind of in the middle of nowhere, let's go to a stop and let's try this in eco mode. Yes, eco mode because it's an EV. This is foot to the floor. There's a detent and it's really aggressive. It pushes against you, but let's go past the detent. And then I'm guessing it goes back into the regular comfort mode. Now for the daily reality of a vehicle like this, what does the aggregate of the disparate modes mean? I'd say for those who are hired to drive a vehicle like this, the eco mode is more than usable around town. But in terms of folks who buy these to drive them, the most usable mode is surprisingly the comfort mode. It is more than quick enough in this a very heavy and very big vehicle. In the first ever episode of the show, we posed the question, what is luxury? Now, in that specific instance, it was about generic luxury cars, but the overall question of what is luxury is something we've looked at over the past 14 years, looking at countless cars as well as design. And what we've come to realize, luxury is not just about how a car looks or a two-tone paint job or the fact that this now has a stand-up hood ornament, which I love, Vielen Dank. Rather, luxury is saving time, and that's not marketing mumbo jumbo. And here is an example. So I am coming up to the vehicle here. I have the key fob in my hand, and I can save the time of reaching out with my hand to open the door, and the car automatically opens the door. So it kind of one-ups what Rolls-Royce and BMW does. Now, I'll be honest, as a nervous Nelly New Yorker and someone that owns a 
77 year old flying machine. I know that's going to break at some point, but it is a cool party trick. Then considering what this is, the ultimate party trick, and that would be your own refrigerator. Now, technically that's not a refrigerator. They call it a cool box. And the idea is you take something out of your refrigerator and you put it into the back here and you can access it in between the two seats in the back. So the theme throughout this entire episode is this is an unusual vehicle. It's not really about driving dynamics, it's about ride quality. There's a pretty drastic difference between this and an EQS 580. There's so much more compliance in this. This clearly feels like a luxury car. Like, let's do a test here. Let's go over these train tracks. Uh, there's no one around here. Don't tell anybody we're going past the stop sign and it, you don't notice it. That's in the most basic economy mode, but let's go and do the U-turn here, which is very easy to do because of the rear axle steer. Uh, this, notice the size of this vehicle. This is longer than an S-Class and very limited two-lane road as we'll do that with effectively almost one turn. But let's try this again, get up to speed. The road is not perfect here. There's some undulations in the road. Yeah, we've got this train track here again. And it's, it's like barely noticeable. So I would argue this goes a step above the EQS. And there's a personality here. I have gone down on record as the EQ vehicles from Mercedes. The thing I don't like about them in terms of what they drive, there's no personality. I think five has a personality. A Porsche Taycan has a personality. The Mercedes, they're, they're almost trying to be too much like a Lexus RX. Not this. This is trying to be an old school luxury car. Now, is it all puppy dogs and roses? No, the steering is unusually assisted, unusually light, but that is by design. And the brakes, I would argue for this vehicle, the one thing that does really need to be fixed in terms of driving dynamics, there just isn't enough braking here. No, it is not that time again to play your favorite game, Mind the Options game, because we don't have any pricing. But that doesn't stop us from guessing. And to do that, we need to put in some parameters into this discussion. One parameter is what's the price of the EQS SUV 580? Last time we looked at it, about 125,000 US base price. But then the other parameter, what's the base price of the Maybach SUV with a gas engine, which is based on the GLS? Last time we looked at that, $161,000. Now, if we layer on the fact that this is a Maybach, then layer on the fact that it's EV, I am betting that first number is going to be a two. Is the second number going to be a two or a five? Probably not. I'm thinking it's a two zero something. But then there are options like that cool box or the champagne flutes, or they're doing this like night package thing where it has dark chrome trim and rose gold headlights and then there's dark chrome trim on the wheels. That is not my cup of tea, but it's definitely a look. And then these guys do do their version of like Porsche exclusive manufacture, where you can walk in and say, I want the interior to be just like this fabric and they will match it. In one case, they even did analog gauges inside of a new Maybox, something you and I have been bitching and moaning about for years. If you pay them enough money, they will do it. So I'll admit this is an unusual experience for me, a guy who test drives cars for a living to be driven by Chris. Chris is my camera guy today. He's also von Deutschland, although the car is not von Deutschland. It's actually von Alabama. Now there's two ways in looking at this whole experience. There's the obvious in the flash seat where I can put the passenger seat all the way forward and I can recline all the way back. And then of course being driven. The second is really what this thing is about, and that is the details. Um, it is beyond a leather interior. It is beyond fancier bits than a serial production EQS 580. Like a couple of things stand out in my drive from Nanaimo, excuse me if I mispronounce the name of that lovely city. Number one, the headliner of this thing, it is not suede, it is not a microfiber, it is actual grains of leather and each piece is separated as there's contours in the headliner 
something you and I normally don't talk about, but it transforms the experience in the car. Like you sit here, and as I am reclined back and I'm looking up at the stunning BC sun and the skyline, I can see the details of the contrast stitch here. Then other details, there are puddle lamps, but not just underneath the outside mirrors. There's a puddle lamp in a place where you wouldn't have a puddle, and that is underneath the center console in the rear of the vehicle. And then there is the usability of picnic tables, and let's not call these picnic tables my guess. This is more about using a laptop because it's angled, and the idea is I could put my laptop here and be functional in the back seat. Now as we pass the stunning scenery of BC, this is really a magnificent part of the world. Let's put this away. And then let's talk about some of the tech. They've got Qi wireless charger down here, and then USB-C down here. And then of course, uh, you can repeat the UX from the front of the vehicle as well as on these monitors here. Why you need this, I, I, I don't know. I think this is more bragging rights of how many screens the car has. And to count, you've got one, two, three in the front and three in the back. Okay, so let's put aside all the minutia of those details and ask the real question here. What's the point of this entire exercise? Well, in my estimation, you are looking at it. So it's on that point we have to pose the question, what have we learned today? And here I would argue a lot, and it's more about missions than it is about this specific vehicle. Here, the mission of Maybach. I have to be honest and say, this, it's too close, at least in design, to an EQS SUV. However, execution and the mission, there totally get the differentiation into the Maybach world, and this being all about the back seat, which brings us to the wish list. And here I'm going to ask for two very big things on top of what I already asked for in the tech review. First would be more sheet metal differentiation. We learned that here this now has a personality, the way it drives on a platform that normally doesn't have a personality. How about give this its own sense of personality on the outside? Then second, being this is all about the back seat, how about a little bit more wheelbase here? Make it a long wheelbase version so we have more space in the back, being that's the mission of the vehicle. But I am just one man, and this is the point of the episode. I turn around to you guys to opine in the comments below or via our social media, Motoman TV Onward, Motoman TV Onward, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And with that, if you got value out of this episode, I would highly suggest you watch our episode with the man who is running all of product at Mercedes. Great dude, he is an engineer, he's worked his way up for many years at Mercedes. He was working in Alabama where this car was built. He basically set up the factory, now he's running all of passenger cars. I had a fascinating discussion with him, you can see that interview here. Until I see you in the next episode, bis später.